My dudes, what's going on? So you clicked on this video because you want some stupid dumb damage. Because we all know big numbers equal big happy. We'll be discussing the basics, beginner damage, and the advanced damage, and focusing mostly on weapon power, base damage, and damage percent for this episode. Because this is episode 1 of the Ultimate Combat Guide series, where we'll cover every combat stat to make sure you understand the most of your characters without getting overwhelmed. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's start off on how damage scaling works. To get the biggest bang for your buck is weapon power, especially early game. Think of weapon power as a juiced out version of base damage. So ideally, you want to scale your weapon power and base damage as high as possible to hyperscale your damage percent. Just like any game we play that has these sources, early game base stat is always superior than percent stat until mid to late game. So early game, the talent Sharpened Axe will be more superior as a base stat than Gilded Sword, which is a percent damage talent. Let's talk about some beginner ways of scaling damage. No, I'm not going over all classes for their damage talents, more of in a baseline to help introduce class guides. The three main sources of damage in the beginner talents, which is available for every class, goes as followed. Sharpened Axe for weapon power, Gilded Sword for damage percent, and main stat. Some classes do have things like Overclocked Energy and Meat Shank that scale off MP and HP, which are better, but that's for another video. Two star talents you want to pick are Dungeonic Damage from the Party Dungeon Shop that gives damage percent based on how many credits obtained, and Beginner's Best Class, which gives you weapon power based on your highest level beginner, which is a Journeyman or a Maestro. Family Bonus are great for base stats. Each one from the first job advancement Weapon Power from Barbarian, and Total Damage Percent from Blood Berserker. Dungeon Flurbo Shop is a great source for early weapon power, because it can be accessed as early as the frog map in World 1. I suggest doing your happy hour every week to easily get up to 19.2 weapon power. If you're a part of a decently high guild, aka the itty bitty army, they'll have a perk known as Power of Pow, which will give you up to plus 5 weapon power at level 50. If you're like me and you have a gambling addiction for the red hat, the Arcade Golden Ball Shop on rotation will also have weapon power for sale as well as base damage, so save those golden balls if you're looking for more DPS. Bribes and stamps are a huge way to scale a fair amount of damage, and we'll be investing into this very late game. Some examples would be Sword, Long Sword, and Scimitar Stamp, which gives base damage, and Tomahawk, Battle Axe, and Polearm will give damage percent. There's a couple more stamps, so definitely hunt stamps down for maximize early gains, and one bribe to hunt down would be Photoshop Damage Range that gives you 2% total damage. Post Office is a huge one, and if you haven't watched my Post Office Guide, there will be a card in the top right, right about now. The two boxes specifically for damage will be Civil War Box, which gives base damage, and Death Storage, which will give you weapon power, and total damage percent, and a little bit of attack speed. You want to make sure that you get these up as soon as possible. The next one on the list is easy, is Statues, which is the power statue for base damage, and if you don't know and you want your statues to become a count bound, you can buy a golden hammer in the World 2 shop and drop it at the statue to make it gold and you could upgrade the statues to make them account bound. Once you hit World 3, another easy source of damage will be your Damage Shrine, which gives you damage percent. It can scale levels over time to increase damage, and Chaotic Cheezor card, which will increase the Shrine's effect percent. Star Signs are another easy source of free damage. Also got videos on that as well for locations how to spend. Another card at the top. Wha-bam! Batty Doo Doo for damage percent, Ned Kelly for weapon power, the Bulwark for massive damage percent, and the Feisty for total damage percent. All of these star signs are good choices, except for Fatty Doo Doo. Nobody likes that star sign. Time for cards. Now when I say, I believe in the heart of the cards, for the majority of the game, the cards are going to be your biggest source of anything, from damage to AFK gains to efficiency. The main sources of damage cards, note only naming the ones that actually matter, are Pincerman, Detonated Ram, Chalky, and Radiant Amrock for weapon power, Snowman, Bloodbone, Dr. Defecus, and the Impossible Blitz Troll for damage percent. And the card set is Bosses of Nightmares, will give you that juicy damage percent drop rate and XP. You'll be using this card set for the majority of any mob farming whatsoever. Gear of course will scale damage, but if you're looking for the most damage out of your gear, you'll be making your way to farm Cheezor armor for damage percent, such as the Cheezor helmet and the Cheezor body plate will give you 
total damage percent, and a little bit of mastery. More of a late game thing, but keep that in your crosshairs. Also, bigger the upgrade stone, the more damage you get. Same with the weapons. Always upgrade your weapons first no matter what. And if you're looking for accessories to go with your Cheezor armor, you could be farming for the Tenacity Rings, which will end up giving you total damage percent. Or if you're a big juicer, you can go for the Emperor Opal Rings, but I do not suggest them. And for a neck piece, you could always go the Kadok Cheezor Scarf, which gives you damage percent and mob respawn, or the Camrock Pendant for the weapon power, or even the Bludgeon for weapon power as well. Trophies are also a good source of damage. The two in particular would be the Megalodon Trophy for weapon power and crit chance, or the Frosty Prince for damage percent. You can go King of Food if you're running damage pots, but that's up to you. Strength pots are a great source of base damage and are inexpensive. Good to fill up if you have a free spot. And for golden foods, golden knowledge is for base damage and golden kebabs for damage percent. If you do the picnic stowaway quest up to the magic meatloaf, you can get up to 32 golden kebabs a day. So ideally you want roughly about 200 golden kebabs on each character to get the most out of your kebabs. Because remember, the more golden food you have, the more diminishing returns they are. And last for beginners, how can we not forget the best part? Premium items, baby! For wings, we got a choice of either the Easter event wings for damage percent and the cheeser wings also for damage percent. Huge if you can retain, but not a huge deal. Premium hats are also mostly not super helpful for damage it's mostly meant for main stat, but some hats come with weapon power, such as the red Bodhi hat. Okay, so that was more than expected. There's a stupid amount of ways to get dummy thick damage, but we're not done. Time for advanced stuff. But if you're still here, why don't you hit that shiny red button at the bottom of the screen there? To help your boy out, make me a happy man. You know what I'm saying, my dude? Dungeon achievements. If you get this far, get a total of 30% damage by completing World 1, World 2, and World 3 bosses and get another 5% from the new fourth frog in world one. Obels are a huge pain and real talk pretty late game, but if you're looking for some big juice, you can run big boy damage and at gold it gives you one weapon power and plant gives you two weapon power. And make sure to farm Cheezor for his hexagon obel for four weapon power and 4% total damage. I know you were all waiting for this one. Let's talk about alchemy. God, alchemy help us all. Luckily, the alchemy sources are only two per cauldron. Only. We're not going over the multiplier bubbles because those are class specific, but affect what I'll mention shortly. Bubbles number five and nine of the orange, green, and purple cauldrons give similar bonuses. Five gives base damage based on max HP for big meaty coloss, a huge bonus, max speed for quick slap, and max MP for name, I guess. The ninth bubble gives damage percent. Get these ASAP and they are Britley Spears, Bojack, and Matty Stafford. And for Vials, Tail Time, which is for rats, and the Krakenade, which is for Krakens. Both of these reward weapon power. Now it's time for Salt Lake, which is unlocked in the construction of World 3. And at the second page at the very bottom will give you total damage percent up to level 250, which is 25% total damage for the cost of a copious amount of pingies. Good luck on this one. Cough, cough. Trapping guide up top right card. Cough. Sorry, something in my throat. Next up is key chains. There are three chains, one for each tier. Tier one, which is the war tooth chain, gives you base damage. Tier two, cactus chain, gives total damage percent. And tier three, which is the star blobby light chain, which gives you even more total damage percent and weapon power since it is a T3 keychain. For the chads that are the Gordon Ramseys of Eidolon, we have cooking. Turkey a la thank. Octoplop, Onion, and Massive Fig all give damage percent, and a lot of damage percent. I'm talking like big, dummy, thick, mecha damage. Oh lord, so much damage. Pet Arena is some of the biggest source of damage because it's not a percent, it's a multiplier. Round 8 will give you 1.2 times total damage, and if you manage to have the finger dexterity of a 10-star Osu player, you can get to round 200 for a massive 1.40 times total damage, so in a total 1.6 times total damage from Petarina alone. Shout out to anybody who actually got that reference. Guess what's next? Our neighborhood introverted skill, the lab, where we spend most of our time 
letting our characters slowly starve. We'll start with the nodes, then on to jewels. Animal farm for damage percent based on how many species you've had bred. Sigils of old and alchemy, which does give base damage and weapon power if you have unlocked those sigils in the alchemy section. Certified stamp book, which doubles stamps. My first chemistry set, which also doubles vials. And unadulterated banking fury, which gives damage percent based on 10 million stacks. And now for the part where weird words can go suck it. We have jewels. Purple Navit gives more damage percent for Animal Farm. Pyrite Pyrobite gives 1.5 times damage, but four gems all activated at once give you a 1.3 times. And Black Diamond Cheese String, I mean Authorite, increases the total damage percent of Unadulterated Banking Fury. And as mentioned in the alchemy section about the fifth bubble, max HP and max MP and movement speed can juice your damage super hard late game. So higher of these stats works for everyone on your account and not not class specific. So make sure all your characters have a lot of movement speed, a lot of health, and a lot of MP. And last but certainly not least, this one's for the, all the whales out there. We got chips. We have Galvanic Software, which gives you just a flat plus 10% total damage. Poker Chip, which gives you 1.25 weapon power multiplier on weapons. Omega Nano Chip, which doubles the bonuses are carved equipped in the top left spot. Omega Motherboard, which doubles the card bonus of the bottom right slot. Silk Road Processor, which doubles the miscellaneous bonus of the currently equipped pendant. So if you're running Chaotic Cheese or Scarf, that's increased total damage and increased mob respawn. Silk Road Software, which doubles the miscellaneous bonus of a keychain equipped in the upper keychain slot. So that would double total damage percent for say, if you were running a chain Blobulite keychain. Silk Road Motherboard, which doubles the miscellaneous bonus of your currently equipped trophy. So a Frost Prince, you'd be at 16% instead of 8%. And Silk Road Nano Chip, which doubles the bonuses of all active star signs. These chips are all huge priority, and you should probably focus to get them when they're in rotation. There you go, my dudes. An utterly massive dummy thick guide for your new dummy thick damage. I know this wasn't everything, but I mean, it's only episode one. We got a few more episodes to cover here, or else we just have a hour long video of explaining every mechanic in the game. Just more of a general outlook, more of damage on a baseline rather than specific. And yes, I know you guys want class guides. I know how many people have been screaming at me for a goddamn maestro guide. It's coming soon. Trademark. So while that's in the works, hit the sub and the bell for future notifications and make me a happy man. While you're at it and you've made it to the end, I want you to say Griffey sucks and his guides suck more than the G-Man. They can Ligma. So let me know if you watched it fully. Also, quick shout out to you guys for hitting that 3K sub mark. You guys are absolute legends and I super, super appreciate the support. Anyways, my dudes, tune in for the next Eidolon video. Stay safe, happy grinding, and peace out.